Hi, this is Roger from Kaga Labs with a kind of reversed or special edition of the M Show, what every maker should have one of. This time I'm asking you what you can recommend or suggest as materials for doing repair work. And I'm speaking of those repairs where you have a case or enclosure where an edge has broken off and I'm Talking of those cases where a 3D printer is of no use because a broken edge, how do you want to build this uh, in, a, in a 3D printer? Or even how do you want to build the files necessary for a 3D printer? There are much simpler solutions to that problem and I've brought with here five different materials that I've used over the times. Some of them with no success and some of them I'm quite happy with. So uh, the best known thing in the maker scene is probably Zugro or her, however this is pronounced in English. And I must admit I'm not really happy with uh, Zugro. I've tried some repairs with that and the outcome was in the end so bad that I've scratched it all away again. So it is advertised that you can kind of peel off or scratch off uh, the hardened Zugro after it has dried and um, and by the way it has a very short shelf life of only six months or so. So let's cut one open and so that you get if you don't know this material get an impression of how it is and it's in my view also quite expensive and uh, so it's like neat um, and it hardens you have to let it harden for nearly a day and everything uh, I tried this th this material on it in the end uh, it didn't stick very well so I, I will not use after three tries I will not use this anymore However, the, the marketing and, and the ads, how many people say this is good, I did not get very happy with Zugru. So next is what a little bit falls out of this topic, but it is also very well known in the maker scene, is this uh, blue tech from Bostic. I think it's a Canadian uh, company. Uh, this is basically not for doing repair work, but just for hanging something on the wall and which can be replaced. So it also has the consistency of uh, neat, but it doesn't harden out. And um, so this is not suitable f for doing real repair work. And to be honest, I've never used this because only after I bought a, uh, this package, um, I recognized, well, this is uh, just a kind of sticky chewing gum kind of material. So let's get away with this. These were the two things that I could make no use of. But the first one that really did the work was this, what is in Germany called power knead originally. It's in fact a two component epoxy glue and you can see the two uh, components the white and the blue one it sells at the moment with three different kind of additions for different application this one here was the original one which is now called repair express and there's also a special repair express metal and repair express extreme and let's see so you cut off a piece of it with a cutting knife or anything like that and you have a little foil on the outside and then you start you shouldn't do this with your bare hands so use gloves or anything like that because uh, this contains bisphenol A I'm not sure if this is pronounced really well so it's uh, uh, you shouldn't do that um, with your bare hands but it's my health that I'm ruining here and you knead it um, until the material has mixed together completely um, I can't do this in full here on the camera because it takes too long and it's also here 10 years old so it's 
not very soft anymore. Anyway, after a few minutes, um, you get a, and you also, have, I can now even smell the typical smell of uh, epoxy glue. And in the end, um, this hardens in, uh, I think, half an hour or so. And when it's hardened, you can uh, drill into it, you can thread it, you can uh, saw it and do anything as if it would be a real uh, material for machining. And I did some successful repairs uh, with this th thing, with this material. Um, in the end, you can see now it, uh, it becomes now softer and... Um, the two components start to mix and it gets warm both by the by the heat from my fingers as well as by because it's an exothermic reaction because now the reaction already uh, starts and um, it becomes really hard it sticks really uh, to nearly every material, even hard, even plastic materials, which are very difficult uh, to glue, even with uh, super glue. And so you can see now it's nearly ready, and uh, the color is nearly even. I would have to do this for a minute or uh, a little bit more to get it perfectly mixed. So I think this uh, was quite a good idea from Patex, but I think this is not available in the US or outside of Europe. I've looked on the homepage from uh, Patex, uh, which is, by the way, a German company. And they have residences all over the world, but not in the US. Uh, perhaps it's sold under a different name or brand or... Um, if you know of a similar material for the US market, uh, please leave it in the comments. So this was the first thing that I could really work uh, with and that uh, is really useful for repair, repair reconstruction, etc. work. So let's put this away and now I'll have to clean my fingers and be back in a second. So, back again, and I'm still alive, and um, I made a little break, and after about half an hour, the Power Express Neat has uh, hardened already so much that you can already now grind it and probably even drill into it and put threads into it. So another half hour will have this material really hard as stone. So, uh, next is Bondic. This is in fact a Canadian based uh, company. I've looked it up in the meantime. Blue Tech is French based, but the Bondic, they are seated in Ontario. And when this came out in Germany, they made quite some extensive TV commercials and I was immediately convinced. And uh, next day I bought one in the local home improvement uh, shop and it comes in a nice little metal or tin box and you get some cleaning pads probably with isopropanol uh, a little sanding stick for preparing the surface you want to glue and then sorry um, here in comes a little cartridge with the UV curable uh, glue I've ordered uh, some replacement cartridges last week but they didn't ar arrive until now and on the other side you have this little UV ultraviolet LED and this hardens the glue and um, you can probably barely see it neither on the camera there's a little violet glow nor with your eyes uh, simply because the eyes and the camera are not very sensitive to wavelength is below 400 nanometers and inside are two very thin uh, coin cells uh, because UV LEDs need more than 3 volts to light up and you even have a little switch for giving constant light. Uh, so anyway, the, the special property of the glue is that it has a gel-like consistency so you can really kind of sculpt little 3D repair parts and you can build them layer by uh, layer and um, I've used this two or three times and um, the result came out really good and uh, 
it's nearly a hard to believe effect that after a few seconds of turning on the UV LED the glue really hardens. It's probably the same kind of glue that is used in SLA in 3D printers with a UV curable uh, glue. So when this came out the set was quite expensive but the price has gone down now substantially but still a replacement cartridge has only a few milliliters of material of glue inside and it now costs around seven euros for one cartridge and I can really recommend um, this set it gave just really good results when doing low volume work and low volume is here meant verbatim so um, with the with the Repair Express need, uh, you can see in comparison that the volume of the material you get with one tube is much larger than what you get with one cartridge for the Bondic. So, um, and last thing is this material. Um, the chemical name of this is poly or polycaprolactone or in short polycapro or polycapro and this sells under a lot of different brand names like Instamore, Friendly Plastic, Shapelock, Polymorph, Plastimake Pro and in uh, I got this one from a Dutch seller and there it sells under the name Protoplast and um, the nice thing about this material is that it melts uh, at around 60 degrees Celsius so I will uh, I will get some hot water and I've never used it before it's still the unopened original bag and uh, I'll try it out here for the first time but I saw some demonstrations from the from the Dutch distributor or vendor uh, I, I met him at a mini maker fair on the Dutch German border and it was very impressive what he did there live uh, with this material so let me get some hot water and see what we can make out of that so let's pour in some of the little balls because they are reusable I have no fear that it's nearly cooking water now and uh, let's see what happens probably for a minute I won't be able to uh, reach into the hot water but you can see the the little balls they become transparent and are starting to melt and yeah this is really already whoops what i wonder is um so the nice feature is that it becomes transparent uh, I wonder if this remains, if it cools down and hardens again. Anyway, you can see you can use it like neat, but I doubt that this is really useful for repair work because I can't see that there is any adhesive effect that it clings or sticks to any material. Of course, you can fill out the holes, but contrary to the to the epoxy glue which becomes hard as a stone uh, you cannot machine this any more when it's hard at least I believe so tell me your experience if you've ever used uh, this polycaprol in any of its uh, variations or brand names because it's always the same chemical made out of oil mineral oil um, it's uh, although I think it's even biodegradable, degradable, and uh, so I, I remember when I bought this, the the Dutch distributor um, he demonstrated it just the way that I did. He even made little figures uh, out of the material, and it's astonishing how long it be how long it remains uh, soft. Uh, so this could be of any use, uh, but I, as I told you, I'm using this the 
first time now and now it becomes a little bit like chewing gum and um, anyway this can be reused uh, many times because chemically it doesn't change when it gets hot and melts and when it cools down again and uh, but I really have my doubts that you can really do repair work uh, with that especially because it softens already below 60 degrees Celsius but for filling large holes or something like that that might be of any use and before I forget it I've made a separate video one or two years ago about Plasti Dip. I will link this in down below in the video uh, description. I won't go into detail here about this thing now because that's why I made a separate video. This can partially also be used for repair work but uh, it's a liquid rubber kind of and just watch the video if you want to know more about Plasti Dip. So in the meantime well, it's still a bit soft, uh, probably because in the core it's still warm and it takes some time. But, well, that was it for today. Uh, we had five little materials. Zugru, I don't like. I have seen no use for that or I could not make any good use of it. Blue Tech uh, is more an adhesive, reusable, repositionable for hanging up pictures on your wall but not for repair work. The Express Power Express from Patex I would like to know if there's a similar material in the uh, US or other large countries outside of Europe. Uh, we had Bondic uh, recommendable for doing small volume repair work. Uh, very usable I like it a lot and about the Protoplast well nice idea but I'm not convinced um, that I can really use that for repair, restoration or reconstruction work. So that was it for today. Thanks for watching and leave your comments down below about your experiences and tips and other materials. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanker Labs.